Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we shall be looking at functions in Python. We already have looked at the basics of functions in the tutorial on solving equations. We shall first review these basics, then we shall move on to other details such as doc strings, default arguments, keyword arguments, and etc. First, let's start IPython by typing IPython in the terminal. Let's write a simple function that prints a hello message upon accepting a name. def welcome within brackets name colon enter note the indentation print within quotes hello comma name. You would recall that def is a keyword that indicates the function definition. Welcome is the name of the function and name is the loan argument to the function. Note that the function is defined with an, within an indented block just like any other block. Our function welcome just has one line in its definition. We can call our function as follows welcome within brackets within quotes the argument that we need to pass world. It prints hello world. All arguments are local to a function. In general functions should be accompanied by documentation on how to use them. Python provides a convenient way of writing this within the function itself using what is called doc strings. They were mentioned in the tutorial on strings. Let's look at how to write them here. Let us add a simple doc string to our welcome function. Let us redefine our welcome function. def welcome within brackets name colon open triple quotes prints a hello message given a name comma enter passed as argument close the triple quotes enter get to the same indentation level print within quotes hello comma name hit enter twice to exit the function notice that the doc string uses triple quotes if the doc string exceeds one line we can use new line characters within the doc string also, as expected, the doc string is indented as is required for anything within a block. Now that we have written the documentation, how do we access it? IPython provides the question mark feature that we have seen in previous tutorials. Welcome question mark displays the doc string that we have just written. We shall now look at default arguments. The split function has been used in two different ways in the given example, one for splitting on spaces and the other for splitting on commas. The function split is being called with no arguments and one argument respectively. In the first case, white space is being used as the default value. Let's now edit our function welcome to use default values. For convenience sake, let's drop the doc string. Def welcome within brackets name equal to within quotes world print hello comma name now let's call the welcome function without passing any arguments welcome open close brackets enter it prints hello world here, world is used as a default argument when no name argument is passed to welcome. Let us now look at the use of keyword arguments. We have already looked at functions and keyword arguments in these examples. LOC, line width, XY, labels are all keywords. Let us now edit our function so that it displays a custom greeting message as well. Def, welcome open brackets greet equal to within quotes hello which is the default argument comma name equal to world close quotes enter print greet comma name let's now see how we can call our updated welcome function using keyword arguments we can call it in a variety of ways welcome within brackets within quotes hello comma James welcome 
hi comma name equal to guido welcome name equal to guido comma greet equal to hello keyword arguments allow us to call functions by passing arguments in any order and removes the need to remember the order of the arguments in the function definition just as we saw in the last example let's now write a new function def per underscore square within brackets n colon enter i equal to 1 while i star i less than n colon enter i plus equal to 1 return get back to the e previous indentation level return i star i equal to equal to n comma i what does this function do it checks if our given number is a perfect square or, or not if the number is a, f a perfect square then the function returns true along with the square root of the given number if the function is not a perfect square it returns false and the square root of the next perfect square let's now call this function per underscore square of 25 it returns true comma 5 let's call it again with something which is not a perfect square say 26 it returns false and 6 please observe that this function returns two values in Python, there is no restriction on the number of values returned by a function. Whenever a function has to return more than one value, the multiple values are packed into a single tuple and the single tuple is returned. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial on functions. In this tutorial, we have learned about functions in greater detail. We looked at how to define them, how to call them, default and keyword arguments, and return values. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you.